CMC turns 75 this year. We'll be celebrating starting July 1 of this summer through June 30 of next year. Lots of special speaker programs, on-campus programs, chapter regional programming uh, programs around the world. Uh, and we hope that you come to campus and you come to some of those programs uh, that we're offering. For this 75-day countdown, we have 10 virtual CMC Connects programs uh, that highlight the history of the college. Each year uh, is a day in our 75-day countdown. And today is 1976. 1976, of course, is the year that we admitted and enrolled women to CMC, soon to be, five years later, Claremont McKenna College from Claremont Men's College. Uh, and so we brought a, a group of CMC pioneers. Our CMC pioneers are our women who enrolled uh, and graduated between 1978 and 1985. And today we're joined by Sue Madison King, class of 85, Eileen Goodwin, class of 81, and Kathy Evans Hurley, class of 1980. We also have a special guest, Gary Carson, class of 78, and I'll let them all introduce themselves and talk a little bit briefly about why they're on this panel. Like I mentioned, please do feel free to add some questions in the chat. We have some questions we'll start with, but then we're really excited to have a great conversation about this uh, very important historical uh, moment in the college's history. So I will start with uh, Kathy Evans Hurley. Kathy, if you could tell us just briefly about yourself, where you are, what you do, and in your primary role here. Hi, everyone. It's great to see some familiar faces. And I'm Kathy Evans Hurley. And um, I have the auspicious uh, role of being um, declared the first person, a woman admitted to Claremont Men's College. And I always laugh because really my father did it. Um, he, um, I, I accepted and he paid the initial bill. Um, so that's, um, that's why I'm here today is uh, I, I got that honor to, to be a representative um, called on periodically because of that role that every single woman that was accepted in that first class, um, we all came on faith because there was a, CMC offered the education we wanted. And that's, um, in talking to others in more recent years and then initially, that's why we were there. So that's why I'm here. Um, I live in Boise, Idaho. I'm married to Kelly Hurley, who uh, graduated in 79 and from CMC. Our daughter uh, graduated in 07. I now teach at Boise State University and um, I teach accounting and operate the Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program which as you know, this year's tax day. So it's been a very, very crazy spring. So um, we'll pass that on and I'll answer any questions later. Thank you, Kathy. And thank you for taking this, this tax day to, to speak with us too. We'll go to Eileen, Eileen. Yeah. Thanks, Evan. Well, I'm the second class of co-ed admitted women uh, and men together. So Kathy was a sophomore when I was a freshman and we were actually in the same dorm. I came from Chicago. And my name was Eileen O'Donnell then. So some of you who I see in the chat are probably shocked that I didn't have Eileen O'Donnell there. But some of you also know the story that I married Kevin Goodwin, who was class of 79 with Kelly. Uh, and we are still together. Our daughter, Michelle Goodwin, is on this uh, as, a, as a person in the audience. And she graduated in 16. Um, we're currently in Northern California. I'm coming to you from beautiful Santa Cruz. And I make my living from uh, consultancy. I have my own business and I work in large capital infrastructure projects, which is loaded with guys. And so my education was perfect uh, just to go from classes where I was one of 10 or, uh, I mean, one of me and 10 or 20 guys in the class. And that's really what my professional life has been as well. It's a, it's a very lightly attended um, profession with women. We're trying to change it, but um, it really has served me well to be able to speak up. Uh, and I think the reason why I got invited to be on this was because I have been active in alumni affairs. I was also on the video, if any of you uh, had time to look at that. And we think that I may be the first woman that was elected to the student senate. So that's my claim to fame. Thank you, Eileen. Sue, we'll go to you next. Hi, everybody. I'm Sue Madison King uh, from the class of 85 the last class that was admitted to Claremont Men's College. And I believe all 71 of us chose 
Claremont Men's College on our diploma. I see several classmates on this call. It's so good to see everybody. And um, I'm on this panel because uh, I was president of the Alumni Association when we thought of this idea to create the Pioneers video. And that link has been added to the invitation. If you haven't seen it, um, you'll, you'll recognize Gary and Eileen and some other wonderful people who are in that video. Uh, but we are just five years away from the 50th anniversary of co-education. Uh, I'm also chairing Claremont McKenna College's 75th anniversary celebration. And in addition to today's program, we also have a digital exhibition that will be coming in August put together by our first ever archivist. So I'm here to promote that and the CMC Supply Shop. So for any of you who want your Claremont Men's College improved in 1976 t-shirt, go to uh, CMC Supply Shop and you can pick your, uh, your shirt up. Thanks, Evan. Thanks, Sue. And we'll go to Gary next. Gary. Thank you, Evan. Um, the reason I'm on this panel, oh, Gary Carson, class of 78, majored in economics and literature, um, and I live in uh, Moraga, California. Uh, the reason I'm on this uh, video is back in 2014 at a um, CMC new student party in East Bay, California. Uh, I was, uh, John McDowell had a, uh, a trivia quiz about uh, CMC going co-ed. And uh, one of the questions was, when were the first women admitted? And uh, when I got the answer right, I said, I was the student who made the recommendation um, as a representative of students on the student affairs faculty trustee committee. Uh, that we go co-ed. The trustee from that committee then made the recommendation to the board. Um, he said, well, we're doing a, um, uh, an honor, uh, uh, making a, a presentation for CMC pioneers on the 40th anniversary of their admittance. You know, can we put you in touch uh, with those folks? And, and that's how I got in the video. Um, I also had a, uh, a little bit of continued participation, if you will. Um, I was an RA of the first community dorm in 1978, um, which uh, women, uh, that was the first year that women graduated. Uh, they weren't the first year of a full four years, but we had some transfers from Scripps who graduated that year. And in that dorm, um, I actually had uh, women from Scripps, Pitzer, Pomona, in addition to CMC. So a uh, little bit at the beginning in 1974 and uh, a little bit at the end in 78. Thank you, Evan. Thank you, Gary. And thanks to all of you for being here today on our panel. And of course, all of you at home as well. I was just looking really quickly through, um, through the list of who's attending. And it is absolutely great to see so many uh, familiar faces. We have Gordon Bjork here as well. Uh, welcome, Gordon. Uh, great to have you here. And uh, I'm just making sure we have Jack and Jill too. We did at one point have Jack and Jill. So hopefully, hopefully the Starks are here as well. So while these four are excellent representatives and have, will have a lot to say, I also know that many of you have stories. And I encourage you to share your stories both in the chat, also on the countdown website, there's a share your story area. Uh, feel free to uh, go on to that website, countdown.cmc.edu, uh, which is eventually our full 75th site on July 1, and share your stories. We're very curious to hear from you and curious to keep a record um, for, the, uh, for the 100th, the centennial and beyond uh, as well. So with that, you know, I think we're going to go hey, first Evan, to... Can I yeah, go ahead. record? It's come to my attention, Carrie George was the first woman to be on the Senate. So we ah, should Carrie, and Carrie's here as well. captured, so she doesn't get... Uh, forgotten. Well, and I have to tell you how that happened just briefly, which was that in, um, in my dorm, which was Wolford, we had a big dorm meeting and the guys decided they wanted a woman to be on the Senate. And I have no idea how it ended up being me, but I was the Senator from our dorm. <laughs> Memorable. Thank you, Carrie, and thanks for being here, and thanks for all of your help uh, as well. I know you're very involved both in Seattle. You're also a CMC parent. You have two alumni children, so 
Welcome, Gary. Uh, let's actually, we're gonna, we're gonna turn back to Gary um, since Gary uh, started um, kind of with the, uh, working with the administration, working with the Student Affairs Committee. Gary, tell us a little bit about how, how that presentation went. What were you asked to do? What did you research? And ultimately, what was your pitch? That's a great question. Um, so the, the first time we met, the other two students on the committee, now understand I'm a freshman. Uh, I, I looked at all the committees that you could join. Two of them were faculty and trustee. I thought those would be uh, more memorable. Um, I, I had no idea what faculty would be about, but student affairs seemed interesting. And of course, the issue that year was CMC's co-education. Um, it was all very formal about uh, why we should and, and should not. And honestly, when I first got there, the prevailing attitude was very much 50-50. Um, but as we started researching it, um, one of the things that you see when, when you look at the 40th anniversary um, video, and, and if you haven't seen that, by the way, um, it's, it's incredibly well done. Um, a lot of our peers in education either had gone co-ed or were uh, looking to go co-ed. And when I say peers, I mean the Ivy Leagues and um, you know, other very impressive uh, liberal arts organizations. Um, we were also slightly concerned about an impact for any federal funding if, if we were not co-ed. But the, the overwhelming reason why, uh, why students were in support of it was, I mean, think about it. You're cutting out half the population in, in terms of um, you know, potential classmates and, and having more students be able to apply is only going to make us better. And that's truly, I mean, that's obviously been borne out by um, CMC's uh, trajectory since then. So the reason that I made the presentation is the other two students did. They were a junior and a senior. The junior was uh, actually in his early 20s. He'd served in Vietnam. And, and for whatever reason, they did not want to make the presentation. I was a cocky freshman. I'm like, you know, WT, if you, you think I'm not going to take my chance to pitch for co-education? So um, I, I did. There were some questions about uh, how interested were the students. My response, very. And uh, um, we were successful in conveying that students would be interested. And then that carried forward as the video shows to the board. Thank you, Gary. Um, so Kathy, you um, obviously were uh, looking at schools, um, trying to figure out where, where you would gain, get your bachelor's degree. Um, what was going through your head when you were thinking about applying to, uh, at that time, a, a single sex institution, men's in the name? Um, what, what were you thinking at that time? So I honestly wasn't considering Claremont College at all. I was looking at Harvey Mudd because um, <laughs> uh, I was going to do management engineering. And I was applying to Colorado School of Mines, which was my father's alma mater and four miles from home. Um, Rensselaer back east. And I went and met with um, Bill Rogers and talked to him about Harvey Mudd, talked to him about my interests, what I wanted to do. And he said, well, why don't you apply to Claremont Men's College? And I probably, didn't because I was interviewing. I probably didn't go, well, duh, but that's what went through my mind. And um, I said, well, and he says, no, we're going co-ed. And I honestly think you would, what your interests are, this would be the better school for you. And so that's what started the conversation. And I never applied to Harvey Mudd. Um, I got my brochure and the pamphlet from CMC with the big, um, I can still picture it, the red stamp on it that said going co-ed in 1976. And I went back to my high school counselor and she actually already knew that. She said, you know, that probably is a better fit. And so I applied early admission. I thought, you know, um, I may as well find out whether or not they want me. And so I applied early admission and 
lo and behold, I got in. And um, my father, because of the type of person he is, said, okay, here we go. Um, and sent in my accept the check along with my acceptance. And the next thing I knew, I was being contacted by CMC saying I was the first woman accepted, um, of which there were some transfer students that had been accepted before I was. Um, but and then it was kind of a whirlwind because they wanted me to um, come out and interview and do some press stuff. And I'd never been to the college, you know, that's, uh, I don't know about the rest of you, but I know my, most of my friends did not visit schools like they do today um, before you went to one. And so first time I saw CMC was when I arrived and spent two days um, going around the university, doing some press talks, meeting different people. And um, that's the first time I went, and, you know, I never regret the decision. It was, it was the right place for me. So, yeah. I'd love to hear that, Kathy. Uh, remember who called you to let you know that you were the first? No. no? <laughs> Not at all. I didn't I know, know if it was going to be Bob Jack or Jill. Jack. Or... I mean, I was with Jack and Jill Stark that weekend quite a bit. And I honestly, don't know. <laughs> That's a really good question that I've never thought about. Do you know who called me? <laughs> I don't know. I just I just pulled Jill up. Jill, you're on the screen now. You can you can wave <laughs> hi to everybody if you want to. Um, so Jill, do you know who would have called me? <laughs> no, but it was probably Bob Rogers. It was probably Bob. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised um, that he would have done that. I wish yeah. I'd been the one. That was so exciting. Oh, that would have been really fun. <laughs> But, again, but I remember meeting him. Well, yeah, I, I'm sure it, um, he would have loved to have done it, especially yeah. since he talked to you. It was well, such was an exciting wonderful. time. <laughs> well, he it, was wonderful. It was I mean, I can still picture interviewing with him and where we were and talking about why CMC would be a better fit for me than Harvey Mudd. So, um, you know, it was, and... Uh, Everybody made me feel so welcome that weekend when I did come and the time I got to spend with everyone. So, yeah. Very glad to hear it. So Eileen, um, you were our, our second round of admits. So when you were looking at colleges and universities um, as a, a senior, there was just a small group of women at CMC. So um, you were, you were uh, while well, Kathy was the, the pioneer to go to a, to a true men's college, um, you got to select one that I think was going through a lot of change at the time. Um, so what was your process going to this really new invention, this, this, um, this new co-educational institution? Well, I did spend time looking back east at schools. And so I was looking at Amherst, which was going co-ed at the same time, Dartmouth, which was going co-ed at the same time. And Dartmouth, um, you couldn't be there one fall and I love fall and that was how they were going to accommodate more women. So I was like, well, wait a minute, what would I do during fall? Because I had this impression that you went to school in fall and winter and spring and had summers off and that wasn't how it was going to be at Dartmouth. Amherst was a really interesting situation. Anyway, there was just lots of different schools I looked, like, looked at and I was not applying to any and my parents were getting very nervous. And um, so my dad was on a business, same, had a dad connection. My dad was out on business in Southern California and I actually had not gone to see the school. And he went and saw a rugby game or something and said, oh, this is great. I think you'd really like it. The weather's fabulous because he's talking to me and it's like 30 below in Chicago for the 19th day in a row. And so I was like, wait, what, the weather, what? And so that was truly the trigger. So I had never seen the school, hadn't met any of the women, didn't really do my research. And so uh, I had traveled the entire summer before I got to Claremont and I showed up and two things struck me. One was it was incredibly ugly compared to the other schools that I had looked at. And I used to go over and just bask in the glow of the Pomona campus because that's everything I had looked at. And then we lived in these Quonset huts, which I want to talk about that in a minute. And the second thing that really struck me like a load of bricks was I was told, oh, hey, hi, second class. By the way, many, many of your first classers didn't show back up. They're taking a gap year. And I was like, wait, what? Why? 
well, nobody really admitted it, but I know now because a lot of those women did graduate with me that it was kind of rough that first year for them. And a lot of them felt like they needed time off to just kind of regroup and make sure Claremont really was the place because um, there was a lot of hazing that went on. And I think some people were able to deal with that a little bit better than others. Um, but before I give up my floor, I just want those because I know I can see a lot of the classes of people who are here and um, Definitely hi Kathleen and Terry and Jay and all the group for my era, but also for the folks that are our kids eras who are on here. Um, I just want to paint the picture that when I say it was ugly, there was no Kravitz, there was no cube, there was no fountain, there was no air conditioning except for um, the tower dorms of which there were two, not three, and they were named Claremont and Fawcett, not whatever the trivia thing was this week that named it Orin or whatever. That wasn't what we called it back then. Um, so there were two of the three towers built. They did have air conditioning. Bauer had air conditioning. But if you took political science or math or psych, you were in some very hot, sweaty rooms with the door and windows open pretty much of the, the year, except when it was pouring rain. Um, so it was definitely a different vibe. And also just to go down the path of the men's college, um, the food at Collins Hall was very male centric, so much so that I got myself on the food committee because it was all about the meat. And um, so my big platform was getting real cheese and eggs on the salad bar. And uh, so we succeeded in that, that made a big difference. So anyway, I'll save some other stories for later, but when I say ugly, it's not at all the campus that it is today, which is quite lovely. Um, because I think had I seen it, I might not have applied <laughs> back then. But I'm glad I went, obviously. Thank you, Eileen. I'm glad you went too. <laughs> Sue, you, uh, you um, enrolled at CMC five years after going co-ed and we were still Claremont Men's College. So at, at some point, were you worried about any identity crisis that the college was having? Um, did you know that the name was gonna change soon? Uh, and I think you were able to select what diploma you received and you, you elected into receiving a Claremont Men's College diploma. So what was going on in, in 1980 and 81 for you as you were looking at CMC? Well, when I applied to CMC, um, I had an advantage uh, over Eileen and Kathy and Gary. Uh, my mom's best friend's son went to CMC. And so I was very familiar with the school. I visited the campus before I grew up in Orange County. And he had told me that it was likely the school was going to change its name in a year or two. So we knew CMC was going to have a new middle word. And there was a lot of speculation that it would follow the letter M just because the school was already well known as CMC. Uh, but I had an, uh, many other advantages because there were women who paved the way and there were um, a lot more women in my grade. I believe we had 71, Liz Casey might correct me if that's not right. But that was a, a more substantial number of admitted freshmen than any other class, and it was growing. And um, there had already been many accommodations. There were women in every dorm. Um, and, and so you, you guys really paved the way. I believe there are about 425 women who attended Claremont Men's College who graduated. And, uh, Freshman year was filled with plaid and bagpipes and parades and parties. And Donald McKenna was on campus many times. It was really a thrill to meet him. And it was, it was clear. I remember uh, Jack and Jill making it clear what uh, Donald McKenna's contributions were. And it was a coincidence that his name started with the letter M. He was an incredible uh, influencer on the success of the college. And uh, it was really a thrill to be in that great uh, that great class, uh, the class of 85, we all call ourselves the best class, but I think a lot of it had to do with entering at a really pivotal time in the college's history. Hey, Ellie, can I jump yeah. on the dorm thing for a minute? Because that's another thing that for those who weren't there at the time, when I showed up and, you know, Kathy and I were in the same dorm because there were very few dorms. Um, so we were in Benson and then one of the towers had one floor and then I believe there were two North Quad dorms that had women and that was it my freshman year. It was probably even less, maybe Beckett had women then, um, but really you had to, you had to sign up to be a commie, a commie. 
right? Want to be in that. That was not something most freshmen ended up being able to do. But by senior year, Phillips and Fawcett and definitely Beckett and maybe one more of the North Quad dorms were co-ed. Still, we had Berger and Marx and uh, I think that was about it that weren't. Uh, but it made a big difference getting women in all the dorms. And what I have to say is some of you won't relate to this, but you would be studying with somebody or partying with somebody in an all male dorm and there was no bathroom for us. So literally you had a choice of either you ran to a dorm that had a bathroom because we weren't swiping like you guys have to do today, or you knocked and went in and, and had a, a sentinel so you could go to the bathroom or later in the night went on, you didn't have time to find somebody, you just ran in and did it. And I think many of you who know me probably know which one I use most often, but, um, but it was really true. But if it was two o'clock in the afternoon and you needed to go, you had to kind of negotiate, like, am I gonna run downstairs or run across the way to the bathroom where I know there is one? Um, and Terry put in the thing too, there were no rugs, there were no closet doors. Uh, the women in Benson, we showered in a giant pit. There, were no, there was no privacy. And I think that was a legacy from people who came out of the army and that was seen as perfectly normal. And then by senior year, we were still in those kinds of dorms. But when I went back and I think probably Sue by your year, maybe they had stalls in the bathroom. I don't know to take a shower privately, but my four years, they didn't. So I just throw that out there as to just how male centric it was. So just to add on to the ambiance, sorry, of Benson. So Beckett, I'm not sure. I honestly don't remember heading to a bathroom in Beckett, so I can't remember whether you guys had a different situation than Benson. Um, honestly, you know, those of you up in North Quad, um, you know, you had your suite, so you guys did have your own. But one of the things, and we've talked about this before, were the urinals. Mm -hmm. um, and so they had self-flushing urinals. Uh, so for those of you that weren't there at that time, um, it was just one, one of the walls in the bathroom was the urinals and then there were the stalls and then there was the, you know, the mass shower. Um, and so the urinals would flush, what, every two or three minutes? So you'd think you were on your own in there and all of a sudden there'd be a flush, you know, early on and you'd jump thinking, oh, wait a minute, there's someone else in this big bathroom. And we tried putting plants in them, but they died because there was just way too much water. And, you know, eventually, like anything else, you get used to it and you just tune out that sound. But it, it was a very interesting uh, <laughs> so couple true. of years in Benson. And then and um, I moved Phillips up to North. the same way. Yep. Those were the big pit yep. showers. Same. And then I moved up to North Quad um, after that. So I was but, in both. Uh, when Kathy and I were in Benson together, our dorm t-shirt, because we were on the top floor, said Benson, where the women are on top. Yes. And I probably still <laughs> have that t-shirt somewhere. <laughs> we did. Uh, somebody Hall, mentioned right? in the chat, the, um, the dorm t-shirts were not PC. <laughs> no, not no. At all. <laughs> yes. They would definitely um, be over the top for most people today. <laughs> so, so we now that we have a, I think a good foundation. Uh, let's talk about those first couple of years. A lot of people have talked in, in in the chat about hazing. You talked about the bad food in Collins, the bad bathroom situation. Let's talk about and, and Gary. You were obviously there for your your junior and senior year, so you kind of saw this playing out as the the, the new Pete, the new students were coming in. What did it look like? How were you received by? male students? How were you received by the faculty? Uh, so maybe maybe first start that student piece. What was it like um, to be received by the other students at C at Claremont Men's College, but also at maybe a school like Scripps, neighboring school? That was to me. Um, sure. All of you. I, I mean, Eileen, I, I found the guys, it was mostly be your boyfriend or be your protector in some ways. Um, you know, and I was just always kind of in between, um, kind of rolled with the punches. But um, I, I mean, there was stuff that went on, but you know, that's, that was true of the era. That was true of the school. There was a lot of men that really didn't want us to be there. We were infringing on their territory. And um, that went for scripts also, where there were a lot of scripts girls that did not want us to be there. Because again, you know, there had been this um, kind of symbiotic relationship between the two schools. 
Um, I found that by doing athletics, I formed a very, very, very strong bond with um, a lot of the men athletes and the scripts athletes. And, um, you know, I just, you just went along and did what you did and made it work. So Eileen comments, Carrie's on here. She said, should speak up. I've seen a few others in both men and women that it would yeah, be interesting Terry, to hear uh, your perspectives. We definitely were the butt of a lot of pranks. Um, there was fish emulsion, there was the stealing of the toilet seats and all the faucets. There was being what was called pennied in your room, which meant that you couldn't get out, um, which was a little scarier than some of the other stuff. A lot of it was just annoying, but definitely was done to send the message. But I have to say truly, and again, being the second class, the sophomores and freshmen guys were just as confused about all this as we were. Honestly, I felt very much um, supported and they were just, especially like, I don't get it either. And it was really coming from a few people, particularly one dorm. And it, that reputation kind of got out. And I think, you know, looking back on it, we were very definitely picked on, but I can imagine there was a very, very nascent LGBTQ. Uh, I think the reason why it wasn't very out was because it was so uncomfortable uh, for people. Um, but again, part of that, as Kathy said, was the era. Uh, and of course now things are a lot more inclusive all directions. But as I definitely moved up and by senior year where everyone had gone to a co-ed college, they all went eyes open even though it was called men's college, all that was gone. You were never pennied in or had fish emulsion or peanut butter and your toilet seat or any of it. Um, I mean, it definitely seat. was there when we were when we were first there. And I don't know, Sue, did you you didn't really have anything that was left? I'm Just sure. one more thing before Sue, there were a lot of men that supported us too though. Yeah. Oh, I mean, absolutely. we're talking yeah, about the ones that, supportive. Even you know, you thought that, but we had a ton of support one. also. So oh, no, there were definitely pranks. And uh, I remember one phrase, better dead than co-ed. Mm -hmm. there, there was still, uh, you know, who knows how serious some of those phrases were. Some of it was joking around, but um, there, there was a, a constant thread of a reminding of the recent history that this was a men's college and that women were now on board. But I, I, like you, I'd like to hear from some other people too about some of their experiences. I've seen Jay Tremblay writing quite a bit. Yeah, Jay, um, talk to us. And the late Neil Herbst, of course, yeah. Um, yeah. It's difficult. Go ahead, James. I'll simply say remembering it is very difficult because, <clears throat> excuse me, in looking back on it, uh, when you recall the misogyny, the homophobia, and the racism, and when you realize that you were both victimized by it and also I'm a victimizer. Um, I think, and some might say, gee, Jay, that's 30, 40 years ago. What's the big deal? And I get that, I understand that. But I also, um, in a post Me Too era, recognize that there is something to be said for a reckoning. So, and uh, so that's the stuff that, uh, that's the part that I end up dwelling on it. Perhaps I shouldn't, but that's, that's just me. Um, I am still a supporter of the school. I donate. I'm considering with my wife a get another gift. So um, I don't want to leave people with the impression somehow that uh, I'm, uh, um, you know, that I, it was so grossly unpleasant that uh, why did I stay? But I will tell you very, very frankly and pointedly, um, and to in 1977 to have a gay roommate, uh, openly gay roommate, and to um, see the homophobia and to be the victim of it as well. And to see my classmates today uh, who then had to put up with stuff. I've been married 35 years, so I've seen what my wife has had to put up with. And I'm far more sensitive to that now than I ever was then. But um, I don't think my classmates, my female classmates got a fair shake. Well, I, I, not then, not now. So 
Well, I, I'd like to just throw out um, one of the benefits of being a minority at uh, you know a formerly men's college was that uh, like Eileen and Kathy, I learned resilience. I learned how to work with men and it actually armed me to probably be more successful in a male dominated industry. I went into investment banking and I went through so much learning at Claremont that I was extremely resilient and I felt that I could handle um, almost any kind of environment because of um, not only the experiences, but I felt a lot of support from other women, from men, from faculty, from the Starks. Uh, there were a lot of people on campus who for me um, actually gave me a lot of that strength and learning to be able, it really formed my life. And I'm so grateful. I, I think there earlier in the chat, there was a comment about resistance of changing the name. And um, I know that was a big conversation and maybe younger alum don't appreciate how proud women were that they attended a men's college. And that shaped a lot of who we are, who our identity was, how we'd open a conversation with a stranger. That was a huge differentiator too in, in telling our narrative about college. So I, I we graduated from and, a men's college. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, yeah. going into it, really the majority of my friends were guys anyway um, from high school. I mean, I really have one very close high school friend that's, you know, was a woman. I, I hung around with the guys anyway. So it, it was very comfortable on that part for me. But I think the point both of you made of moving into fields that were more male dominated and working in that, we just rolled with it because we'd already had that experience. The other thing, speaking Sue to your point, I think being um, six years into it, one of the things that we got to do was we got to change a lot of minds. So my freshman year, I moved into Burger Hall. It had never had women living in it before. Um, the guys who lived there called themselves the Sons of Burger, and they were not at all happy to have women in the dorm. The upperclassmen who decided to stay in the dorm rather than move to the all-male, then Benson, Benson had had women in it, and then it went back to being all-male our year. Um, but a bunch of them decided to stay in, and, and they definitely had the better dead than co-ed. Uh, they hated us when we moved in, and we had no idea what we were moving into. Here we were a bunch of women coming to a men's college, but we had no idea that we were moving into a dorm where we were going, going to be so unwelcome. But by about halfway through the year, uh, we did a few things that convinced them that maybe it was okay to have, have women in the door. And... Uh, and uh, a lot of us have made long lasting friendships from that. And, and I agree with you, we've learned a lot of resilience. Uh, we've learned how to, how to compete in a, in a men's world. Um, and yeah, there were times that it was far from ideal, but we, we ended up being uh, the result of all the things that we learned at CMC, including what we learned in those very difficult, those very difficult times. Thanks, Elizabeth. I know, Elizabeth, I think you had a daughter graduate last year, right? She did. Well, yeah, she got her diploma last got year. Her diploma. She unfortunately, so graduate she next unfortunately year. did not get to graduate. And she's, she's still lamenting that, but uh, hopefully she'll be It's not far. It's one aware. more year. 50, 54 so. weeks and she'll walk across the stage. <laughs> I'll let her know. <laughs> All right. Well, how about the faculty? So obviously we know there, there, was, there, was, some, there was hazing. There was some uncomfortable situations. Um, I'm grateful for all of you who, who share those stories uh, with us today and of course at Alumni Weekend uh, and elsewhere. Um, how was it with the faculty? I could imagine there'd be some that embraced you and it was easy and some probably uh, didn't quite understand it. Were you treated fairly? Were you treated equally uh, as men? How did, how did that work? That's for anybody. Uh, and the classroom experience, maybe the classroom experience as a whole. And in, 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 um, I don't remember feeling any different. I could just be clueless, but um, I felt the faculty, at least, um, you know, I had some joint sciences classes and then our basic core, we could flunk just as easily as the men could. <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, we were equally challenged and some of us did better than the others, but I don't ever feel 
that um, faculty discriminated. Now that could just be me and plugging away at things, but um, others, comments? Yeah, I, I didn't feel that way either. The one thing that I think I did notice was there were very few female faculty. Yeah. Um, yes. and, and I certainly noticed the difference when my daughter was there that there's, uh, you know, many, many more female faculty. And I think that they bring a great uh, perspective to, to teaching that um, we, that was the one thing that we didn't have many of. So I had the, I had the odd experience that I thought that I would have with one, I had one female professor, I think the whole time I was there and she did not like women in her class. And it was in my major and she made my life just a living hell. Uh -huh. So, you know, and she was denied tenure um, either in my junior or senior year. So that was, that was a real struggle. I think she now lives in my neighborhood, Sherry. <laughs> I saw her walking one day. Great. She made my life so miserable. But I agree with Elizabeth that, um, you know, and, and Eileen and Sue, I mean, we, I was in the class of 84. So that would have been the fourth class. And we still had, I was in Benson my first year. Berger was still all male. Um, we were still feeling some of the effects by the time I was a senior of, just being a minority on campus. I, I really, I remember kind of being oblivious and Jackie Staten Stillwell, I think she can remember those too. It's like, I just walked around. I didn't realize what it was. I got accepted and I went and I treated it like it was any other college experience. Um, I don't think that at the time I associated the issues that I had with some of the male professors as being because there were women in the class until afterwards. Um, but I think that my whole career, I've been in two, I was an accountant, I'm a lawyer now, um, in very male dominated professions, very male dominated firms, large national and international firms. And uh, I think that Claremont helped me to get through that um, in a way and also help to mentor younger female professionals to navigate their way through too. And I don't so think I would have been able to do that. I had a couple of women professors and I never felt one way or the other that there was any specialty treatment or, or harshness from them. Uh, there weren't many, I agree with that. Um, one thing that was interesting that would never happen today, some of you may remember, I was a lifeguard, so I was always lifeguarding, and um, there was no uh, costume uniform requirements. So I would lifeguard in a bikini with some torn gym shorts over it, and then run to class, and then go back to the pool, and go back and forth. And um, and so I remember one time I went to the AF for dinner, and of course I wore something like a dress. And I remember a professor saying to me, "Oh my God, you do own clothes," and I was like. And then I realized, well, yeah, because I'm always coming and going in your class and I have my bathing suit on, which I didn't think of at all as anything provocative because it was my job to wear a bathing suit and save people at the pool. And so it really made me rethink that. And I think um, probably that person wasn't saying the same thing to Kelly, who also is Kathy's husband, is a <laughs> lifeguard who rode his bathing suit to class, but he wore a t-shirt over it. And so I can see the difference now. But at the time I was quite <laughs> And I think Kelly just, <laughs> Kelly just said he never wore a bikini to class. <laughs> I want to comment on one, well, first, on two things about the faculty. One is that so many people um, were openly welcoming. And I see um, Gordon Bjork, Gordon and yep. Susan on this call. And at yep. least I make sure, you know, Gordon really took a number of us under his wing. Oh, yes. and other profs did too. But I didn't encounter um, anything that I noticed from any um, professor that was negative until my senior year. And there was a professor whom I'm not gonna name, but we just didn't hit it off. And I thought that was kind of weird because, you know, I was pretty easygoing. Um, and he actually, at one point, 
I figured out, oh, it's not me. It's the whole concept of women because he actually said so. And I was shocked, you know, because by this time I came in, you know, 1976. And by this time it was, I think it was second semester. It might've been first semester. So it was 79, 80. We'd been around for a number of years. And so I was just taken aback, but I have to say that was in my experience by far the exception. Hey, Carrie, and I actually, um, I brought Gordon and his lovely wife uh, up to the screen too and asked them to unmute. So Gordon, do you want to give us any reflections on uh, CMC going co-ed and what it was like to, to help the, the new women? Well, I don't have any particular views about CMC going co-ed. I remember my wife saying to me, you certainly would want our daughters to be able to go there <laughs> since the first three children in the family were women. But I wanted to remark on something about uh, Donald McKenna. Um, we had a student faculty discussion group that met at our house about once a month. Pablo Nathan was one of the notable people in it. And um, Donald McKenna came over one evening to participate. He was the only one who had read the book under discussion. <laughs> and he knew the names of all seven students who introduced themselves to him in the pre-dinner drinks. So impressive. I mean, he learned them. Yeah, he learned them. Well, thank you, Gordon. And thank you both for being here with us today. Um, Professor Bjork, actually, I think it was in January, you did a, you did a program for us. So we appreciate that. And hopefully I did. And come to campus. My first, my first Zoom lecture. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> one of my friends pointed out, he didn't realize how many times I shook my head. <laughs> Talking. <laughs> well, well, thanks to you both. And I know, I know Jack and Jill are here as well. So thanks to both of you. Um, so uh, I thought it would be um, uh, interesting to kind of reflect on um, your post CMC moments. So having a Claremont Men's College degree, uh, going out into the working world, uh, you kind of touched on uh, some of the experience and uh, how being at a men's college um, and going through that transition really helped you become uh, maybe more successful in the professional world, but talk about those first couple of years uh, after CMC and it's open to anybody, um, how it helped, how it hurt, uh, the looks you got, anything like that. Well, I have a funny one because I had Claremont Men's College on my diploma, of course, and there was no McKenna yet. And it was a long way from being a McKenna. And then Rotary had just gone co-ed and I had a job where it was important for me to be seen in the community, it was part of my work. And so I got proposed to be in Rotary, which was again, just going co-ed and including the form that said, what was my wife's name and things like that. And they assigned me to the party committee, which you can imagine, I said, oh no, thanks. I think I'm better on something else. And so there on my resume is a men's college and Rotary. And then when I would meet people, I could see them looking for my Adam's apple because I'm six feet tall. And I thought they think that they're, that I've made a transition which back in the early 80s was pretty dramatic. And I was like, no, 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 really, this is me, look. Um, but now, of course, you know, things have changed. And I didn't get my Claremont Men's College diploma. I'm sorry, I did get my diploma. And I would never change that. And I was a reluctant person, but I have changed my resume to say Claremont McKenna College because it's so well known now in the community. And Claremont Men's College has pretty much disappeared. For, except for those of us who were there then, right? So just to make it uh, knowledgeable. So anyway, that's my story of coming out with something that was a real double take for people uh, in the beginning. So um, I ended up going to work for U-Haul right out of Claremont. And um, it was a very, it's probably still a male bastion, I don't know, but it is, was definitely a male bastion at that point in time. And they um, were losing, they weren't having their market share at that time. And they hired me to analyze their maintenance budget, which I knew absolutely nothing about trucks, vehicles, anything like that. And I'd gotten the job basically because I could check some boxes that they wanted somebody to have because of course work at CMC and different opportunities. And I literally worked out at their technical center, which was all men, except for a woman was the, the manager of the whole thing. But I didn't report to her 
And I would get a call about every three months from one of the Shones, who they're the owners of U-Haul. And he had hired me and say, come and make a presentation to the board of directors on what you're doing, Kathy. And I would walk into Carol, who was the woman that I reported to. I go, Carol, what am I going to talk about? And she says, oh, whatever you're doing right now. I said, well, I'm going to get fired because I'm going to tell them something they don't want to hear. And she'd say, oh, you'll be fine. And so I would go into this boardroom of eight men and make this presentation of, you know, this is what's happening with the maintenance. Um, and we were laughing. We're actually in Arizona right now as we were seeing the U-Haul trucks go by. Because when I left, what I suggested to the board was they needed to get rid of the old trucks and could defend the reason why on maintenance budgets and things like that. And CMC gave me both the education and the knowledge and the um, chutzpah maybe and being not uncomfortable in a total male bastion um, to make those suggestions um, that I did quarterly expecting to be fired the next day. But um, it definitely provided us the opportunity to walk into any environment and um, be comfortable. Um, so yeah, it, 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 was, it was good. And I, I display proudly my Claremont Men's College diploma. I'm now teaching at Boise State University. Um, went from economics to accounting. I don't know. <laughs> and um, I love having it up on the wall and it's great. It, it brings up topics of conversation. My students will sit down at my desk when we were in person and kind of look over at my diploma and you know, kind of give you a quizzical look. And so it, it is fun, great thing. I, would just, I, I just wanted to throw out um, just the acknowledgement of how much better known Claremont McKenna College is nationally and globally than it was as Claremont Men's College or even the Claremont Colleges, that our reputation has grown to be, to reach into so many corners. And I remember always having to describe, oh, it's a small liberal arts college in Southern California. No one had heard of the school. And now everyone's heard of Claremont McKenna College. And I think it's partly because of pioneers, not only in co-education, but in so many areas that have impacted CMC or, or students who have been impacted by the college, uh, that all of these contributions now, Evan, I think we have 14,000 alumni. Uh, that's just incredible, the, the reach and the impact that each person has had to build the reputation of the college. So to me, that's, that's the biggest takeaway is how much better name recognition Claremont has uh, around the world. And it certainly uh, served us well, Sue. I think, uh, uh, I think there are currently only three male-only institutions uh, left in the U.S. A lot of them made the decision to go co-ed at some point. There are more uh, women co uh, colleges for women out there than for men. Um, someone asked earlier if, they, if, they, if I thought Scripps College would ever go co-ed, and I don't think so. I think there is, uh, I think Scripps has found a really good spot in higher education, plus being a part of the, the Claremont Colleges um, provides uh, that best of both worlds aspect for them, um, for them as well. So uh, with that, a huge thanks to our four panelists. I will put the website for the countdown to our 70th anniversary uh, in the chat there. Uh, next week, we actually will be speaking with uh, Bonnie Snortum, Priya Junar, and Jill Stark on the founding of the Marion Minor Cook Athenaeum and the Athenaeum program uh, on Monday to correspond with 1983, the opening of the Marion Minor Cook Athenaeum. Uh, and of course, when, it, when we hit 1999, we'll have Jack and Jill reflecting on the 29-year presidency. Uh, the, um, uh, the archival exhibits, uh, specifically around the pioneers, will debut in August. We'll have another program at that time to talk from more of a historical perspective and and bring on a few other people to talk about uh, how that unfolded. Uh, I really appreciate everyone's thoughts. Thank you for sharing. Thank you also to our, our guests, Carrie and Sherry and Elizabeth and Jay, who added some comments as well. Thank you for, uh, for being here and thank you for being such strong supporters uh, of our great alma mater. Uh, of course, not everything is perfect and CMC, I'm so proud as always, uh, learned from the past and always grown as well. And we need all of you, your support, your time, your talents, your contributions 
uh, to make sure that we keep growing and we keep improving.